In this video, I'm going to conduct a Man Whitney U statistic in order to test the difference between males and females with respect to their rankings of an item related to earning capacity. And so both the males and the females ranked the extent to which they value earning capacity in a prospective partner, and a higher rank implies greater value, and a lower rank implies lower value for that person. So before I do the Man Whitney U, I'm just going to quickly check the homogeneity of variance assumption, which in the context of Man Whitney U really means homogeneity of distributional shapes. So going to Analyze, Descriptives, Explore, put the dependent variable in the dependent list and sex in the factor list, click on Plots, and Untransformed, Continue, OK. I've already done this before in a previous video. So I'm going through it fairly quickly. And here is the result. It's actually statistically significant based on the median P equal 0.047. So I violated the assumption of homogeneity of distributional shapes. Now in the advanced section of the chapter, I demonstrate a method to get around this problem. And it's a very attractive solution because it allows you to infer your results more directly to the actual ranks as well. So I encourage you to check that out. For the sake of education, I'm going to persevere with this analysis. So I'm just going to show you how you can do it anyway, assuming that this wasn't a problem. So going to Analyze, Non-Parametric Tests, Legacy Dialogues, and we have two independent samples, because this is like an independent sample t-test. So put earning capacity in a test variable list, sex in the grouping variable, and I have to define the groups just like an independent sample t-test, and I have males and females 1 and 2. Continue. Man Whitney is the default, so keep that selected. Click on Options. You do get some descriptive statistics, but they're not terribly informative. Continue and OK. And we can see that the mean associated with earning capacity was 6.44, but that's for the whole sample. It's not for the individual groups. You'd want to know that for the individual groups. And then sex has a mean of 1.67 which is just telling me that there are more females than males in this sample, which is also highlighted here. In this ranks table, we have males 96, females 213. Now here are the mean ranks, but these are transformed. These are not the actual means associated with each group rank. If I wanted the actual mean associated with the actual ranks inputted here, I would actually have to get that by splitting the file Compare groups, sex, OK, and then just get the basic descriptives. Earning capacity, continue. These are the actual means associated with the ranks across the two groups. So the males have a mean rank of 4.26, which is implying that they don't value earning capacity in a prospective mate as much as females who had a mean rank of 7.42. You can see in the, the large values, not a lot of males scored as high 9, 11, 12, 13. There's a few of them, but not many. When you look at the females, proportionately, there's a lot more of the females that ranked earning capacity very highly, which implies that they value it more. These are informative types of rank values, in my opinion. But the Man Whitney test isn't conducting the test on the difference between these mean ranks. It's actually testing the difference between these mean ranks which implies that SPSS is converting these original ranked values into different ranks, and it is. I'll show you what it's doing. Go into Transform, Rank Cases, and put the Earning Capacity variable on the Variables box. And here it says assign rank 1 to the smallest value. We'll say yes. OK. And now SPSS has created a new variable, which is a ranking variable. And you can see that the ranks are much larger than the original ranks. And basically what it's doing is it's ranking all the cases from 1 to 309. And then it calculates ranks on that basis. And there are a lot of ties because there are a lot of people that scored exactly the same value. So it's transforming it into a different type of rank, which is based on the sample size. Whereas the participants originally ranked the data on a rank scale from 1 to 13 because there were 13 attributes to rank. So it's different. Ideally, I would be able to speak to the results relevant to these mean ranks, which is what the participants rated earning capacity on, not this mean rank. But the results do extrapolate from this difference to this difference. 
So I'm just a little technical thing about the Man Whitney that I want to point out about where do these mean ranks come from? Why is it not looking like what I would expect it to be here? Again, check out the advanced section of this chapter. I show you a way of analyzing the data so that you can talk about these mean ranks directly. So for the purpose of this analysis, the Man Whitney U statistic has identified the difference between these mean ranks as statistically significant with a z equal negative 0 0.900 and p less than 0 0.001. Ultimately, the Man Whitney U statistic is converted into a z value. So it starts off with 3,758. Most people would have no idea what, how to interpret that value. But the z value, it follows the z distribution. And obviously a z score of something as big as 9 or negative 9 is really a very substantial z value. The sample size is quite big in this study. P less than 0 0.001. So I've rejected the null hypothesis of equal mean ranks. And so females do appear to value earning capacity in a prospective mate more than males on the basis of the study that I simulated these data for. Now, just like any other statistic, you should be thinking about effect size any time you conduct an analysis. And I show you in a textbook how to convert this z value into an eta squared value. And it actually is this formula right here. It's squaring the z value and then dividing by the sample size minus 1. So in this case, I just literally grabbed the negative 9.002 the sample size is 309 in this study, 309, 309, and so I get 81 divided by 308 equals 0.263, and that implies that 26.3% of the variability in the ranks, technically these ranks, which SPSS transformed, was accounted for by sex. And that's a very large effect size. Accounting for a quarter or more of the variability in the scores based on one independent variable is quite an impressive feat. So there is a substantial difference between males and females with respect to their ranking of earning capacity in a prospective mate with respect to its attractiveness.